Welcome to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice are here falling on my ear The sound of God declares And He walks with me and He talks with me and he tells me i am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none had us ever known he speaks on the sound of his voice he's so sweet the birds are Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. We are the temple of Jesus Christ, or temple of Yahshua, faith of the Holy Spirit. We come in with words of exhortation. And we come in as Yahshua himself came. He came to save, not to condemn. Uh, we're going to give you our testimonies and our revelations. And as Joshua said in Luke 12 and 3, that which ye have spoken in the ear in the closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetop. We have a question. Why Yahshua? That mighty name of Yahshua. Why do we use that word Yahshua? Let us go into prayer. Father God, in the name of Yahshua, Lord, we come to your throne with thanksgiving, knowing that you created heaven and earth and all power and authority in your hand. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for these words of exhortation. Lord, let those who have an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Father God, we know that your word would not go void, but it would accomplish the mission that you have sent it. And Father God, just use us as an instrument. Father God, for you, for your glory and your praise, humble us, Father God. Lord, we say that we are blind so you can continue to give us sight. Father God, we're just so thankful, Lord. We're thankful for all those that are under the sound of my voice. Father God, open their eyes so they can see and perceive. Unstop their ears so they can hear and understand. And Lord, give them a a heart of flesh to be obedient to your word. In Yahshua's name I pray. Amen. Amen. We're using this word Yahshua and we're having some questions, which is good. And we know we don't dispute or argue. We just plant and water as Yah gave us the commission. He want us to be one, as in as he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane in, in John the seventeenth chapter and eleventh verse. He said, "He want us to be one as he is one with the Father." So we've been using this word Yahshua, and we don't want it to be a stumbling block. And so today we're going to talk about how we, how we got that revelation. We're going to present the history of his name, how the name Yahshua entails all of God. And then we're going to give you, biblically, and show you that the name Jesus means Yahshua. And then finally, some concluding thoughts. We're looking at the history, the history of the Bible. It took over years, thousands of years for the Bible to be written. And when it first started, we, we, just, we were speaking in Hebrew. It was written in Hebrew. But after they was carried away into Babylon, and they was there for 70 years, and when they returned, they start speaking Arabic.
then there was conquered, the world was conquered by the Greeks and the, the Greek language was prominent. And by the time Jesus Christ came, we was into Latin, which is Roman. So the word Yahshua, we started, let's start from the beginning in Hebrew. We can turn to Numbers, the 13th chapter, and the 16th verse. It reads, These are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Hoshea, the son of Nun, Jehoshua, Joshua, Jehoshua. And that's where Joshua or Yahshua came from, the son of Nun, Hosea. It was given by God. That name was given to Hosea by God through Moses. We can look for the definition of, of names. Hebrew names always had definitions. And the name of Yahshua means the Lord is salvation. And you can re reference dictionaries or you can reference the strong concurrent concordance. Why we use Yahshua? Well, Yahshua or Joshua, he represents the Old Testament or he he gave us the shadow of things to come. He, he took the people, Israel, to the natural promised land. But Jesus Christ, who is Joshua, have brought us now to the spiritual promised land. More history. And this is really important. The letter J itself was never was not in the English net alphabet until 1524. So for 1500 years, the name Jesus could not be used anyway because a J was not in the English alphabet. You can search this, Google that, or you can even reference the first King James version Bible. It was written in 1611. And even the J didn't even been integrated into the language then because in that Bible from 1611 there is no J in that Bible. The first King James version. So Jerusalem was Jerusalem. You had Jordan for Jordan. And Joshua will be Yahshua. Coming on down into scripture itself, how we serve that wonderful name of Yahshua, the power of that wonderful name. We reverence that name. Not taking that name in vain, Yahshua. And it represents the second point, that is represent all of God. Turn to me to Psalms, the, fourth, the 68th chapter, in the fourth verse. It reads, Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Extol that rideth upon the heavens by his name Jah, and rejoice before him. His name Jah. David called him by his name, the great Jehovah, Jah. That is his name. And you can see here in the 68th chapter, in the fourth verse, that every letter was capitalized, Jah. We know that's the universal name of God, is Jah. But we know since there wasn't no J in the Bible, in, in, in the English alphabet, it has to be pronounced Yah. That's why the, the highest praise that we have 
And I don't care what language you get to. All the ones that got the different names of Jesus. Every language got different names of Jesus. But all of us, of us know that God's name is Yah. Why? Because the highest praise is hallelujah. And it's got a J there, but we do not say hallelujah. We say hallelujah. Yah. All of God is in Yahshua. All of his, his, him is in that name, Yahshua. John, the fifth chapter in the 43rd verse, Jesus, who is Yahshua, said, spoke. He said, I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. He said, if another come in his own name, you receive him. We cannot say the... Jesus' name, Yahshua, without seeing the Father. Yahshua. you got the Father and the Son when you pronounce Yahshua. You also have the Holy Ghost when you say that word, that mighty name of Yahshua. According to St. John 14, 26, Yahshua says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. The Father. When we say Yahshua, we say in Yah, so we got the Father concerned. Even the Holy Ghost was sent in the name of Yahshua. Brothers and sisters, that's why we use this name. Now let's show you biblically on the way the name Jesus means Yahshua. We can turn two places in the Bible. Let's first turn to Acts the seventh chapter and the forty-fourth verse. And we're going to read the forty-fourth and the forty-fifth verse. Acts seven forty-four. Our fathers had a tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he had appointed, speaking to Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen. This is Stephen's, when he's talking to the, the Sanhedrin council here in the seventh chapter of Acts, telling the history of the children of Israel. Coming to the, to the important verse, 745, which our fathers that came after, brought it with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God draved out before the face of our fathers until the day of, Mo of, of David. There he says, that tabernacle, that's Moses' tabernacle that they was carrying around for 40 years in the wilderness. And when they went over to Canaan, They brought that tabernacle with them. And he said, our father brought him in with Jesus. Jesus, that is not speaking of Jesus Christ. That's speaking of Joshua. They brought that tent with Joshua when they went over to Canaan. So therefore, brothers and sisters, Jesus means Joshua. We might think, oh, well, maybe that was just one place. See, they, see, they, they cannot... The, the gates of hell cannot prevail against God's word. And he tells us at the end, knowledge will increase, according to the prophet Daniel. Hebrew 4 and 8 turned to, to, to that scripture. And Hebrew 4 and 8 is still speaking of the history of the Israelites. And it states, for if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Again, this is not speaking of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. It's speaking of Joshua. For if Joshua, they did not get rest when they came over to Canaan. They did not follow all the what God had told them to do. And they didn't get rest. They had wars throughout their history, as you can read the Old Testament. 
They was also carried away into slavery into Babylon. And they've been here ever since. And there's no rest. Only rest we get is with the true Yahshua, the Messiah. As he spoke, spoke in Matthew 11, 28. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So if this Jesus didn't give him rest, and they're supposed to be the same Jesus, that would be a contradiction in the Bible, and the Bible do not contradict itself. So brothers and sisters, we see why we use the word Yahshua. It included all of God. You can't say it Yahshua without saying the Father named Yah. And we know the Holy Ghost is named after Yahshua. He said, I'm going to send down the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, in my name, Yahshua. Brothers and sisters, some the last point, some conclusion, concluding marks, some more, a little bit of history or more about this name Yahshua. We know Jesus himself, when he was on his earth, he spoke in Aramaic and Hebrew. But the New Testament was written in Greek. How we know he spoke in Arabic? And because some of the words he, he included in the, even Mark many times, he included Mark 3.17 when he says bon Bonasius, talking about James and John, the son of thunder. When he rose the daughter from the from the dead in uh, Mark 5, 41, he says, Talitha, kumi, Arabic, Hebrew words. Mark 7, 34, when he say, Ephatha, when he told the, to open his mouth, to, to make the dumb to speak, Eph, Ephatha. Mark 14, 36, Abba. Mark 15, 22, Goliath. Gogatha, which means skull in English. And, and when he was on the cross, he spoke Arabic. Eloi, 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 Lama Sabathani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We know when he went on the cross, and, and it's, it's recorded in St. John 19 and 19. And he says, Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. He said, this title then read many of the Jews for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. So it was written in Hebrew, the word Yahshua was written. That's his name in Hebrew. But brothers and sisters, God is a spirit as we always been telling you. Through all these, we serve him in the spirit. We are the temple of Yahshua, faith in the Holy Spirit. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Even if they change the name, Yah, Yah know what our heart means, what we mean in our hearts. And we have to use the word Jesus Christ so people can understand us. We can look at Acts, the second chapter, in the sixth verse. He says, Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and was confounded, because that every man heard them speak in their own language. Yes, his name is in different languages. It don't supposed to be translated. Names do not translate across languages. But Yah know what we mean. In Spanish, it's called Jesus. In Swahili and in Rwanda, they, they call it yes, Jesus. And now we see in English, it's called Jesus or Joshua. God is a spirit, and we worship him in spirit and truth. And when we worship him in spirit and truth, sometimes we don't even know what we say. It's not our words. 
as we can see in Romans 8.26. He said, likewise, the Spirit also help our infirmities. He said, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. It's the spirit how we serve Yah. So let not this Yahshua be a stumbling block. But we use Yahshua because it include all of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. John 3 and 3 is saying, except a man is born again. We have to be born again. Born again, using today's vernacular, means to empty the hard drive, clean the hard drive up. We have to clean our whole minds up, all the things we've been taught, and read his word as we've been telling you. These things may sound strange, the word Yahshua, but it's biblical. Everything we said is in the Bible. I have been using the name Jesus for over 60 years. You, it's, it's, Yes, it's difficult. To, to change. But we got to be born again, brothers and sisters. We're not condemning. And Yah is not going to, Yah is not going to hold you responsible for things you don't know. What, what is our motivation? Our motivation is, is to his commandments. Loving our Lord, our God, with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And when we love him, his name, we find his name, he reveal his name to us. We have to shout it on the housetop like he said. He whispered in your ear. But we got to shout it on the housetop. Let us go into prayer. Father God, in Yahshua's name, we thank you, Lord, for revealing your name to us. And Father God, we know the gates of hell cannot prevail against us, Lord. It, it's not what we say in our mouth, Lord. It's like what comes out of our heart. And you know the heart, Father God. And, and Yahshua, you know sometimes even the spirit, we, we don't even know we utter in the spirit when we in your spirit. The gates of hell cannot go against us with whatever they do to try to confuse us. But Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for, for your revelation. Lord, let those who have an ear hear, Lord, what the spirit has to say. Father God, and we're so thankful, Lord, we now to him that is able to keep you from falling and pre present you faultless before for, for his majesty with exceedingly joy, the only wise God, may he be man, majesty, dominion, and power for now and forevermore. In Yahshua's name I pray. Amen and amen. Joy we share as we tarry there, none had us ever known. I'll say in